I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Steven Universe, Season 4, Episodes 16 through 20. Yes, we're taking a break from Gravity Falls to catch up on some currently airing shows, namely Steven Universe. <laughs> ah, small hiatus. So, see, we can be current on things if we don't get too far behind to begin with. Mm-hmm. And the nice thing about Steven Universe is you haven't realized that you've caught up on all the episodes because all, ep all the episodes are so short that you're like, that, that was that was all of them? Yeah, that was an hour and about 15 minutes of stuff, yeah. Yeah, I was like, but I, I didn't even charge my recording device yet. So going from one surprisingly well-written, entertaining children's show to another surprisingly well-written, entertaining children's show. Yep. These episodes, as usual, were so good. And jam-packed full of stuff and information. My brain is just overflowing. Yeah, all I can think of right now is like the first episode and the last episode of the vibe we watched. Yes, because the first episode, you know, the summary of what happened while Steven and the Jims were in space rescuing his father, you'd think, oh, this is just going to be one of those side characters, side story, basic episodes. But no, it's really interesting. I mean, like a comedic version of Tales of Ba Sing Se. <laughs> because nothing huge happens, but everything happens. Mm-hmm. Let's do our own Crystal Gems, because why not? That actually sounds okay. Let's do it. Yeah, I was kind of expecting Connie to be the voice of reason, but she's like, no, no, I can see your logic here. There is a logic to it. The thing is... You had to look at what makes the Crystal Gems the team they are, and that's playing to everyone's strengths, not trying to fit into rigid roles. You want that? Go back to Homeworld. You also see that, wait a minute, Connie and Lapis and Peridot actually haven't really reintroduced to each other, though it feels like they should have. It really seems like they should have, but Connie wasn't really a part of any of the mission having to do with the Cluster. And the interaction with Lapis was incredibly brief. You know, Connie was just one of the one, pe many people who nearly drowned. And Connie hasn't been out to the barn at all. Though it so seems like it. It does, but she hasn't. Also, interesting that Connie was just able to stay there, considering how strict the Mahesh Warren household is. Mm-hmm. And let's see. I'm trying to remember which episode that is. I'm probably skipping over one. The one where... Steven is like sitting at home. Actually, it would have been the next one because they just got the sign repaired or whatever. Because it's the next one where Steven's just sitting at home and him and Connie, I should say, are waiting for Mrs. Mahesh Warren to show up. And then he sits at home by himself and he starts thinking about his mom. And I love how they use the fact that her mom comes in and goes, oh, my God, I'm so worried. I'm so sorry. And stuff like that. And he sees this connection of family and it makes him feel so down about how he doesn't have a connection with his mom. Even though he does, it's not in any sort of traditional familial sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's there alone contemplating this because you see him looking at the warp pad and the room responding to that desire that he wants to know something. And just briefly going back to the Crystal Gem wannabe episode, because we get to see that Peridot has gotten so much more control over her metal bending. Nice use there. I was just going to call it levitation. But it's specifically metal, so. Mm-hmm. Not just control, but strength. She could barely lift like a teaspoon before. Mm-hmm. Now she's lifting the entire car. She's still struggling a little bit, but she can now lift these big, heavy objects. Also, those two would make a great car wash. Though, Lapis could pretty much handle it all on her own because water could go anywhere. She can get even into the tire tread that's still in touch with the concrete. Peridot's is kind of more for effect. Mm -hmm. Though, if you could trust that she could hold it, it would be great for mechanics. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like she was more stable on the first one and she was less stable on the second car. Because the first car kind of locked in place. And the second car, after, she came back, after they came back, was a little wobbly. Well, they were uh, starting to fight. No, I meant before the, the fight started. But yeah, yeah. Well, also a little more overconfident, not putting as much focus into it. And I love Lapis. She apparently does a very good Garnet impression. That was quite well done. Well, the, the voice acting anyways. Yes. And then someone puts in the comments, they're the same voice actress. 
That would explain so much. <laughs> We're not saying that they are. We didn't look. Don't kill us. I'm pretty sure they're not. I'm actually pretty sure one of the reasons that Garnet doesn't speak much is because the voice actress they have for them is actually a pop star. And I love how I said them without even thinking about it. It does fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the time that Steven spent in Rose's room with the room conjured version of his mother it was still very emotional for being, air quotes, all fake. Mm -hmm. Though I'm thinking that version of Rose was actually very accurate because I think the room knows Rose. And maintains that information. And who knows, Rose could have actually implanted something in the room, some like um, ghost version of herself in the room that in case Stephen ever asked for her, she would appear. Entirely possible. Very probable considering, you know, she took the time to let, leave the VHS tape and lie in. And so much of what we saw of how this Rose behaved is what we've seen in the flashbacks and stories that other people have told. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> two possibilities there. One is that the room is projecting a very good representation of Rose. Two, that the room's interpretation of Rose is heavily colored by Stephen because Stephen has heard all of these stories. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it matches the stories we've seen because that's all Stephen knows. Mm -hmm. But, like, based on the reaction stuff to the negative stuff, I'm thinking that it might be an imprint of Rose that activates when, when Stephen asks for, can I see my mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, between the two options, I, I lean towards the first. Mm -hmm. And now to move on to another side character, the conspiracy theorist. Yes. As Ronaldo moved on from snake people to rock people, and such an interesting take on prejudice and uh, attempts at understanding. Like, no, rock people are completely different. They do this. Oh, uh, Stephen shows off. They do this. Stephen shows off. But they also, Stephen shows off. Yes. The nice part is that Ronaldo realizes, oh, I've made a mistake here. I said things that I shouldn't have. I wasn't intending to be offensive, but I've been narrow-minded and judgmental. And then he goes too far the other way. Yeah, he's actually still narrow-minded and judgmental, but he thinks he's open-minded. Mm -hmm. He is a very complicated character. <laughs> Yes, but we see so much progress for him through the episode because when you see the revised pamphlet, who are the crystal gems and how can we help? Hmm, I missed the title. Thank you for catching that. <laughs> All I saw was the photoshopped Pearl shaking hands with him. I love how they avoided using the word photoshop too. Yeah, no, I did this with uh, photo editing software. Mm hmm, just that little fun episode, but it was also kind of hard for me to watch because it kept going, oi. <laughs> Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldo. <laughs> you don't get how this works, do you? No, it's kind of like when Princess wanted to join the Powerpuff Girls. I don't remember the episode. Sadly, I do not remember a lot from Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, basically she came to school, saw the Powerpuff Girls were the coolest, so she said, I want in. They're like, it doesn't work like that. So then she ran back to her daddy and went, daddy, 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 I want, I want, I want. And got all those power-ups so that she could rival them. Ah, uh, okay. Should we move on to the next episode? Or do you have more of this episode? Uh, Ronaldo did surprisingly well for being that sleep-deprived. Yeah, he stayed up. I need to look it up, but I think he stayed up too long. Not the too long as in too long, but the too long as in longer than any human can actually stay up. Because I think, like... Three days is the max? And then your body forcibly goes, no, you're sleeping. And I believe they said he was up for a week straight. Yep. I was like, you have to wonder, okay, so sleeping is optional for gyms, not needful. So is eating. So did he also go a whole week without eating? Doesn't look like it. Just saying. Also, yes, I do know there are diseases out there that will keep you up and make it so you can't sleep for longer than the time I stated. I do know that. I was just saying for a normal, healthy human being, probably like four days is the max before your body goes, no, you're sleeping, like right now. And then there's the other wonderful 
opposite version of those diseases where it's like, no, you're sleeping anytime you want you to. And then there are those people who can actually get by on like four hours of sleep. Or none. Mm -hmm. There are actually people who do not need sleep. I know. I envy them. I, I think I would have trouble because I would need some way to disconnect. Hmm. I would probably be a lot better at meditation if I couldn't sleep. And shall we move on to wrestling? Yep. That's another nice thing about these particular episodes is there's a lot of callbacks to previous episodes and previous seasons. Like the wrestling and the room and Lapis in the la later episode. She talks about stuff from previous episodes and how she had to adjust to these things. Mm -hmm. uh, so what did you think? Yeah, he called it pretty much from the beginning. We were watching the very first fight and Lux is like, oh, someone's bored. Mm -hmm. They did a very good job of illustrating that with how her tone of voice was. And how she was reacting to things, like how Steven was all excited and goes, let's do our signature move. And she was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I love how everyone's reaction after a mic drop is, hey, those are expensive. Yeah. Well, specifically him, who cares a lot about money. I'm saying in the show overall, because Mr. Universe did the same thing in the flashback episode where Pearl showed off rainbow quartz in front of mr universe for the music video because she was trying to show how greg could never offer rose what another gem could and he does a mic drop and he's like why did i do that those are expensive so i'm saying it's a recurring theme in the show ah well they do actually even though greg has a lot of money now they do actually show the value of money in the show pretty well mm-hmm even though he has gobs of money, he still cares when something breaks that's expensive. So he still has a sense of how valuable the money is and how valuable things are that you spend a lot of money on without being overly... Uh, without placing the value of the items higher than the value of like people and relationships. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. That was interesting. I especially like the final fight where he's like, whoever gets to those first and then everyone comes out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. I also love how Sandy is the one holding up the door for the balancer. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I expected this. Pretty much. <laughs> and did you catch one of the other episodes? They were actually holding hands. Mm -hmm. And he's actually like looking off to the side like I'm holding hands with her. And she's like just smiling and reading her book, I believe. Yes, book or magazine. I'm not sure which. The, the frame doesn't hold for very long. Mm -hmm. We haven't bothered to go back and pause it yet because we're basically recording this right after we finished watching them. Yeah. It just Lars's frustration in that episode of they quit. Tiger Millionaire was my favorite and he just went off. And Steven's like, I didn't think about the fact that I didn't have to quit. <laughs> and then he comes back with a changed story and Lars is like, eh, everyone else is cool, but Lars isn't. And Steven's like, okay, now what do I do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> What can I do to make you happy? And Lars is like, stop taking such an interest in my happiness and emotional well-being. <laughs> Which is probably a lead back to the episode we didn't really watch. <laughs> Very likely. <laughs> Very likely. Also, I love how Sandy is totally like, no, that's Steven. Yeah, yeah you, what, you couldn't tell? <laughs> Lars, Lars. <laughs> and now to a ruby falling from the sky. Very convenient where she landed. Mm-hmm. Ah. <sighs> I love Garnet. I wished for another star to fall so you could make a wish. Oh, she sees something. Because don't Garnet says something like that? I'm like, she knows something's going to happen that has to deal with the sky. Mm-hmm. And I love the, do wishing stars scream? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Either that Ruby's extremely smart or extremely stupid. I still can't figure out which yet. Not entirely sure, but can be clever without being intelligent. And definitely has some sense of humor because as steven pointed out it would have been less work just to steal the ship mm -hmm. though i don't think the ruby actually knew where the ship was because she would oh it's over there <laughs> i didn't notice because that entire team of rubies was implied to be incredibly stupid and pretty much so far every ruby except the ruby of ruby and sapphire that makes up garnet seems to be ridiculously stupid Especially since I was expecting that button not to open up the back door, but to start cages for everyone. Because weren't they there to get stuff? Do stuff? 
they were initially there to bring Jasper back. Mm -hmm. They weren't after the homeworld refugees. But after everything that Stephen and the Crystal Gems did, wouldn't you want to capture them? And the other real question is, is she going to use the ship to get the other rubies or just go back to the homeworld or will we see her in a different way? Yeah, and I still vote that she didn't realize the ship was there, but she was trying to reintegrate with Crystal Gems to get the ship. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the ship happened to be out at the farm. I still love Lapis's reaction. I was right! No one can be that well adjusted. And then Ember looks over at me. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle a lot of different situations pretty easily. And I tend to have more of a uh, low stress tolerance. Yeah, good thing I'm not evil. Because apparently, well, she's not evil, I shouldn't say, because no gem is really evil. Even yellow diamonds, probably not evil. They just don't understand that what they're doing can be perceived as evil to the people of Earth. Because she's doing it for a purpose. She may not have always been that standoffish either, if you think about it. It may have been the fact that one of her friends, aka a diamond, was killed. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't happen to gems. They can be shattered, but it's not very likely. No, and it's extremely not likely for it to happen to the diamonds. The diamonds are the queens. They are in charge. Because we know gems get shattered. Because when Ruby first fused with Sapphire in front of all those nobles, they were like, you will be shattered. So it is a known concept. And it is used as execution. Mm -hmm. But I don't think... It's really a, a thing for them in their minds that this could happen to me, especially for the higher ups like the diamonds. Very much so. God, the way just Navy's voice the whole time and she was just so happy. I'm like, <laughs> if you were a main character, you would be a Mary Sue and I would slap you silly. I love the expressions. They were so classic. Oh, they were so happy and it was just so awesome. And I was like, I know what the conflict's going to be in this episode. Like, yeah, wow. Yeah, Lapis takes time to warm up to people. And the fact that you aren't having any problems and she had so many. It's actually still a good lesson for Lapis. Very much so. And a very good lesson for the audience of you can't hold yourself to someone else's standards. It may be easier for someone else to do something compared to you. And that doesn't devalue your own experiences. Mm -hmm. It may actually even give more value to your experiences. Because sometimes doing something too quickly, even if you're good at it, is a bad thing. Yeah, but then I don't know how much we turn it around at the end by going, Yeah, Ruby was just faking. All she wanted was the ship. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's just that moment of, Yes, I was right! <laughs> and then Garnet having both balloons. Pops the one welcome. Well, it was worth a shot. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, so the odds were about 50-50 on whether Ruby was going to betray them or if Steven could work his Tenchi Moyo magic and get another gem on their side. Hmm. So I think that's all the episodes, right? Yes. Now we know two of the five Rubies are not going to be on the Crystal Gem's side because Eyeball wants to kill Steven and Navy just stole the ship after tricking them so we have three more chances because <laughs> apparently we didn't bother to pick the rubies up on the way back from rescuing greg mm, that's a good point because they did say yeah we need to do something about that but apparently not on the way home from rescuing greg mm -hmm. and just as i predicted we didn't get any kind of time problems even though i was like theoretically <laughs> Yeah, I was like, yeah, children show logic, we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Especially since they're bending time and space, so they may not have actually traveled any kind of distance. You know, folding space, basically putting two points together at the same time. So that you didn't actually travel the space between them, you just went from A to B. Mm -hmm. Like pages in a book touching. Yep, basically A became B and B became A, and then suddenly A and B were separate again, and you just happened to be in B. Ah, uh, science. A good way to make your brain turn to mush. Because you're thinking so much that it overheats. Yes. Uh, one of the things I was thinking early on is, when is Steven going to change out of that outfit? I mean, that was basically his prison suit. I would have excused myself from Connie and gone and changed back into my signature outfit. 
the very least taking the earrings out because getting your ears pierced hurts. Uh, and I really like, I'm back in shorts. <laughs> and I brought you a pizza. And he's like, you're all back. Yay, family. Mm -hmm. So as a whole, what do you think of these episodes? Very enjoyable. I don't feel that we had any of the huge reveals that we've had in some sets, but the continuous world building, character development, because we saw growth in Steven and Amethyst of realizing, oh, we don't need the wrestling as this outlet anymore, and we can still do things together that don't have to be wrestling. Because mm -hmm. I really loved how they were like, so how do you want to go out with a bang? Which almost, you would think, means, okay, we're going to trounce everybody. They're like, no, we're going to get our tails handed to us. I love how they were basically both smiling as they were laying there knocked out. Yeah, that was awesome. And then Lapis and Peridot, both in the Crystal Gem wannabe episode and the Ruby episode, and even Connie, both in that episode and in Spending Time with Steven. And that reminds me of something I forgot to mention in those couple episodes. When Peridot's hair got wet, I like the way it looked. Especially since like it's still mostly standing, just little parts of it are a little bit weepy. I'm like, that hair has some staying power. Yes, and now that we've gone through all five and we can jump anywhere, I love that apparently the top way to represent someone as Pearl is to give them a cone nose. Because Jamie did the same thing for the play. Hmm. And then they did it to Pumpkin. She was referred to as Bird Mom, because apparently people got reminded of birds when they looked at her. I'm like, I never got that impression. No, but she does have a very prominent nose, and apparently that is the best way to represent her. Mm-hmm. As he nods his head for the radio audience. Yes. And I really enjoyed the episodes, too. And it, just like the episodes, this episode went by quite fast as we recorded it. <laughs> <sighs> this may be our shortest ever Steven Universe episode. Mm-hmm. So shall we do the closing? <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Steven Universe Season 4, Episodes 16 through 20. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe, thumbs up, let's see, share with friends, watch other episodes, leave a friendly comment. And if you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on Tumblr, DeviantArt, and Twitter. Really like his art? Check out his commission availability. Really like us? You can support this channel financially through Patreon and Ko-fi. Please see links below.